the youngest and most attractive site. Like a magnet, the Jongaralatau National Park attracts tourists with its uncharted and beautiful wild nature. Before, this was a closed territory, and one needed special permits from the border command post to visit it. Today, due to the creation of a national park here and simplification of the border regime, these protected areas are finally open for visiting. The park is located approximately 440 kilometers away from the city of Almaty, in the direction of Taldekorgan, within the borders of three districts, Alakol, Aksu and Sarkant. Overall, there are five natural parks across the territory of the Almaty region, but the Jongara Latao Park is the youngest. It was created after the merger of a number of forest districts and has a total territory of more than 356,000 hectares. Kazakhstan has a very rich flora, which includes around 65,000 types of plants. Around 700 of these plants are endemic, and 400 are included into the Book of Endangered Plant Species. More than half of them are protected in the territories of reserves and national parks. The wild Seaver's apple tree is a source of pride of the Jongara Latao National Park. This is precisely where the biggest wild fruit forests are located. Scientists have proven that the Seaver's apple tree is the progenitor of all cultivars of apples on the planet. Preservation of plants that are included into the Book of Endangered Species is of great interest because they are wild counterparts of cultivated plants, which resulted in many cultivars. This is first and foremost the famous Seaver's apple tree. This apple tree was named after the German scientist Johann Sievers, who was the first to provide a description of these trees during his travels through Central Asia at the end of the 18th century. And the results of his research were confirmed by the Soviet botanist Nikolai Vavilov and Kazakhstani scholar Aymak Jangaliev. These are the wild fruit forests where the Seaver's apple tree and the apricot tree grow on the territory of the Almaty Reserve, the Ili Alatau National Park and the recently created Jongar Alatau National Natural Park. They attract scientists from all over the world because of their unique genetic pool. Today the park is literally an apple paradise. Five genetic reserves of the Seaver's apple tree are located on its territory. In spring, during the blooming period of the apple trees, the hills take on a soft pink-white shade. In terms of beauty and uniqueness, this site is on par with the blooming of the sakura plants in Japan. Overall, of course, the reserves and national parks play an important role in the preservation of rare plant species. They are also valuable because it is possible to conduct research here on inviolate territories research on the state of the population for the forecasting and development of measures for preservation. Specialists working at the National Park not only protect the apple trees, but are also engaged in their cultivation. Every year, the territory of the wild fruit forest is expanded by 30 hectares. The largest populations of apple trees of the Jongara Latao are located on the northern hills, at a height of 1,200 to 1,600 meters above sea level, as well as along river terrains. It is believed that the Great Silk Way, which passed through these territories, facilitated the proliferation of the Seaver's apple tree. The National Park is an ideal place to get away from laptops and cell phones, to relieve stress, stop worrying about the mundane, and ponder upon the eternal. To engage in ecotourism means to see places that have not been touched by human impact. At the National Park, it is forbidden to conduct agricultural activity or to herd cattle. The park's infrastructure has not yet reached its peak of development, but it is possible to choose from a great variety of tours – ethnographic, educational, extreme tourism, which also entails rafting along mountain rivers.
thrill seekers are attracted by the Koksu River, which translates from Turkic as sky blue water. In the left bank tributary of the Karatal River, Koksu commences in the southwestern hills of the Jungara Latau at a height of around 3,000 meters. The valley of the river passes through the north central range and the south central range. The river flow is fed primarily by the melting glaciers. That is why the highest level of water is usually observed in mid-July, the hottest summer month. In spring, there is also a minor river flood, which is caused by the melting of the snow, but as a rule, it is on a much smaller scale than in July. The river Koksu is considered to be one of the top 10 rivers of the CIS. Rafting along this river is an opportunity to take part in an extreme raft and see one of the most beautiful ravines of the Jungar Alatau Mountains. The main advantages of the raft boat is its high maneuverability, which allows to stop in any place along the riverbank and enjoy what nature has to offer. The main goals and aims of the National Park are preservation and restoration of the natural mountain landscapes and to provide an opportunity to conduct scientific research and to engage in various types of recreational and educational activities. The territory of the Jongar Alatau National Park is a place that is astounding in beauty and which attracts not only people from Kazakhstan but also tourists from various countries of Europe, Asia and North America. Unique natural environment, a favorable climate, and aesthetic beauty of the mountain landscapes are complemented by the richness and diversity of its plant kingdom. First and foremost, by the picturesque coniferous forest and a considerable number of animal species, which are included into Kazakhstan's Book of Endangered Animals. At least 75% of plant species that grow in the Jetisua Latau can be found here. There are 76 types of plants which are endemic and grow only in the territory of the Jetisua Latau and are not encountered anywhere else in the world. The animal kingdom of the park is also very rich and diverse. The park is home to around 52 types of mammals, at least 238 types of birds, eight types of reptiles, at least two types of amphibians, and two types of bony fish. Twelve types of plants, two types of amphibians, and six types of mammals, and at least six types of nestling birds are included into Kazakhstan's Book of Endangered Species. During the migration period, one may encounter rare species, such as the spoonbill, the Ferganus duck, the peregrine falcon, the bustard, the little bustard, the hubara bastard, and the eastern stock dove. One may also encounter the Tanshan brown bear, the beech marten, the palace cat, the Turkestan lynx, the snow leopard, and the Tanshan argali. The Jongar Alatau National Nature Park has two mountain lakes, which are almost unknown to tourists. In the meantime, there are many legends, as well as truthful stories, connected with the Green Lakes. The lower Jassel Kol is located at a height of 2,262 meters above sea level. According to specialists, the lake is around 300 years old, and it was formed as a result of a strong earthquake. The water in the lake is too cold to be inhabited by any wildlife. There was an attempt to stock fish, but they didn't do well. However, lower down the river, it is inhabited by the scaleless Osman and the Tibetan loach. The depth of the lake is 90 meters. Old-time residents tell that before, not far from the lake, there was a turnpike, and where today the river Agunakadbe flows out, there was a wooden bridge. Further along the lake itself, there was a path laid out in stone, and only the few knew about it. The locals used this path, hidden by water, to move across the entire lake on horseback. 
but one careless step to the right or left and it would result in a plunge underwater with all the belongings. Today, nobody knows where the secret path is and no one has risked to cross the lake across the water. Despite the fact that it is the peak of the summer season, the water temperature in the lake does not rise higher than 10 degrees. Higher up the mountains, approximately a day's walk away, there is a second lake, which is called Apajasolkol for its emerald green water. While there is a well-trodden path that leads to the lower lake, the upper lake is located in a narrow, hard-to-reach ravine. A characteristic feature of the climate in the northern ranges of the Jungar Alatau is that its height reaches more than four and a half kilometers. Like an impenetrable wall, it halts the warm air winds coming from the deserts located near the Lake Valhash. Heavy precipitation with snow is not unusual here, while at the same time, 10 kilometers north, bright sun shines over the flatlands. The ravine cuts off as a steep wall. Down there at the very bottom, from under the glacial moraine, a mountain river flows. The field which is covered by high grass is an ideal place for a tent. Here tourists, and of course the tired horses, can rest carefree. And its lower stream, Aganagate, joins the Lepsi River. Before escaping out onto the plains of the flatlands, through their joint powerful stream, they erode the mountain range. After 200 kilometers along the Lepsi River, which is by the way one of the seven largest rivers, Jetasu finally disgorges into the Lake Balhash. In the large basin Aganegate, the colors and the wild forbs flicker before one's eyes. And above, there is the unrelenting buzz of the bees. The park is rich not only in terms of its unique nature complexes and biodiversity, but also in its historical and cultural heritage. Archaeological monuments that are located across the territory of the National Park date back to the early Iron Age. The Iron Age is marked by the establishment of nomadic and semi-nomadic cattle breeding in Kazakhstan. It is also called the Age of the Nomads. Archaeological monuments such as the burial grounds and burial mounds, wall engravings, Scythian treasures are all considered to be very important sources of material and spiritual culture of Scythian tribes. For lovers of ancient history, on the territory of the park there is the Uygantas burial ground, located in the ravine of the same name. It has more than 150 burial sites. In the valley of the Saramsakli River, one can see burial mounds, and in the Karapcha ravine, rock carvings. On the left bank of the Baksan River, there are drawings of wild animals. 45 kilometers away from Sarkand, next to the Ashebolak River, the 13th century town of Koyluk has been preserved, which has been included into the UNESCO World Heritage List. Excavations were commenced here in the 1960s. In 1998, the famous archaeologist Karl Blaipakov headed the field research works here. Among large discovered objects, there is the Buddhist temple, Eastern Hammam bath, which is seen right from the road, a mausoleum, where it is believed that the commander of Karluk Khanat, Arslan Khan, is buried. Thus, the park presents unique opportunities for organizing local as well as international tourism, the program of which is based on the use of unique natural features of the national park, together with the visits to archaeological and cultural monuments, with the aim of studying the history of our people and their natural treasures. One hopes that tourists, who in the very near future will undoubtedly discover for themselves this incredible site, together with the workers of the National Park, will be able to preserve it in the same state that nature granted it to us. <laughs>